you have Jesus' DNA. I mean, you were born again. The divine nature attributes that you have are the same divine nature attributes that Jesus had, and this is your DNA, my DNA, our DNA. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of our praises. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the new creation. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Father, we just thank you that we can come together this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here with us. Thank you, Lord, that we know that uh, when we come together, Lord, your spirit is with us. And we ask you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit may quicken us, Lord, that our mind may be receptive, may be able to hear, may be able to receive, may be able to appropriate everything that you have done for us. Lord, that we may know experience the truth of the power of your word. We just thank you, Lord, and praise you. Lord, for we know that uh, we are not playing religion here. We are coming in the presence of the living one, the one that created the whole universe. And strangely enough, is here to minister to us through his word and his spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, this is going to be again on uh, the topic of prayer. We're going to be on that for quite some time. How many uh, had uh, a, some changes, some breakthroughs from last week message? that uh, understanding that wasn't there before. Oh, one, better than nothing. <laughs> Two, three, all right. Praise the Lord. You know, the idea is that, uh, as I explained, um, these things have to be spiritually discerned. Your mind is not enough is not capable to understand and to receive the things of God. That's what the First Corinthians says about the natural man. He cannot understand the things, spiritual things because they need to be spiritually discerned. Amen. And so there is a question of breaking through the veil that uh, our mind still provides or uh, uh, affects so that our spirit as born again believer may be able to know some truth, but our mind may not be receptive to pick up everything that is there. But the more we want, the more we desire, he doesn't, you see, God doesn't just give things for free. It's free, the gospel is free, but uh, there has to be a desire in us to receive from him. And this is why Jesus said, you know, he was using parables. Because uh, they're just stories. And much of the Bible is just flows through us and doesn't produce the changes that should be producing because we are not able to connect. We are not able to receive both in our spirit and in our heart the things that are said there. And all this series is going to be at that level. See, that's why I said prayer is a mystery. And it's a mystery. It's something that is not easily uh, understood by our mind. And this is why people don't pray. Because if people will understand the impact that the proper prayer can do, and that's proper, it's essential key word there, 
then they would be praying all the time. Like Paul, like Jesus, and all the others. Because uh, it can uh, change everything. But we had to do it from the right level, you know, in spirit and in truth. And some people cannot get there because they lack the experience. They lack the understanding. They lack really the ability to move in the space. And this is something you had to learn. See, this is something we learn. We learn a walking with God. We learn to walk in the spirit only as we work as we want it. We had to break our flesh. That tends us to do things in a fleshy way. See, spiritual things have nothing to do with uh, the flesh. They are envy unto God. The things in the flesh. Make me sure that I said the right sentence. <laughs> All right? Are you following me? Okay, so... How many started to pray the prayer from Ephesians that I put together on Facebook? Okay, that's good. I really think, you know, it's a good thing to actually memorize it. You know, it's a modification of uh, Ephesians uh, 1, 17 to 23 that deal with the issues and ask, you see, and ask God the desire for us to perceive it, to understand things. You know, our understanding and our knowledge are key to our ability able to walk in uh, the, the way God wants us to walk. It's not, you know, it's, it's more than just reading stuff and following some um, ceremonial. It's a question of coming into an experience that uh, enable us to come in contact with the living God and release in us the power that he has and wants to give us to overcome in our life and the people around us lives, the situations that they are in, the needs that they have, the way Jesus did. So let's start with that. You know, this is a good place to start. And I don't know if you have a copy, but I have a copy here with me. I know almost by heart already, but uh, I'm going to read it just not to mess it up. <laughs> okay. So we, we can say it together. I say first the piece and then you follow me. I pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that may give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the, of him, in the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding, eyes of my understanding being, enlightened, being enlightened, that I may know, I may know one, what is the hope of his calling, Lord, two, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and three, what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward me who believe according to the work of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only on this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all, the th the, over all things to the church, which is his body. The fullness, of him the fullness of him who feels all in all. Praise the Lord. I mean, if we just get that, you won't be there sitting down quietly. <laughs> okay? 
you will be jumping around. Hallelujah. You know, I hope that uh, at the end of this series, you know, you are going to have a revelation that you never had before. Because uh, revelation is the make, make what makes the difference between one who's walking in tradition and walking in uh, religion and us walking in victory. Because the purpose of revelation is not to give you information. Information, if it's no use, is useless. The purpose of revelation is produce transformation. Amen. I think that's something that we should write, you should write down. They have to remember. <laughs> okay? The purpose of revelation is to give us transformation. Okay? All right. So, we have been seeing some things that, uh, you know, are important for us to understand about prayer. That is not a mental exercise. It's not even an emotional exercise. It's a spiritual exercise, a spiritual event. And we are not so much in contact with our spirit to be able to move there freely and to be able to do the things that uh, are involving it. But it's there naturally. See, the thing that we saw was the chair, the prayer, is something that is uh, universal for everyone, every human being. It is uh, characteristics, and only human beings have that characteristics. There are no other beings that can pray. I'm talking about the physical world there. Yeah. Okay? So the idea is that uh, this is uh, a specialty, is uh, something that we have that nobody else can. Okay? And we have to realize this is a gift that God has given us so that we can uh, operate in a way that is not just human, it's divine. We can operate the way Jesus did. Because he operated like us. He showed us how to operate, how to do, how to do things, how to work. So, <clears throat> one of the things that I stressed and I started opening up about was the fact that one of the ways that Jesus prayed was by himself. Separated. Not with others. That's most of the time he spent in prayer. He spent hours, sometime night, the whole night, praying before going out and ministering to people. Okay. I don't think he was wasting his time. Okay. He knew what he was doing. He knew that it's essential for us to spend time by ourselves in prayer. And he taught that. And he explained some things that we're going to see some things that is going to you know, if you don't spend time in prayer by yourself, you're going to be, I believe, you know, that if, if you really get what I'm saying to you, and I don't know if I can finish today, even just that topic, but uh, you're going to be motivated to do it yourself. Okay? But it's a question of understanding. It's not just you follow something because, oh, the pastor said, big deal. Okay? The thing is, you know, that you have the spiritual understanding, you, you, you have the conviction and the understanding that this is a truth that's going to change your life. Okay? So let's start here with, uh, you know, why Jesus spent most time and what Jesus said about spending time in private prayer. Let's go to Mark chapter 1, verse 35. If you have the Bible, you can go there, but I'm going to start with it. Just now, in the morning, having risen a long time before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. <clears throat> now, you know, okay, I'll continue here. Verse 36, and Simon and those who were with him searched for him. So you see, he just went away and uh, he just disappeared. For a long time, he was away, and they didn't even know where he was. Okay? 
Now, pick another one scripture here. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. Okay. It says, Now it came to pass in those days that he went to the mountains, to the mountain to pray, and continued all night in prayer to God. All right. So this is, you can see, and this is a pattern. You can look many scriptures if you read through the New Testament, to, to the Gospel. You see that this is something that he did all the time. It's something that he repeatedly was doing as a part of his life. Okay? Now, the point is why did he pray in private or did he go away from other people just to pray? And why did he do for it? Did he do it for such a long time? He spent, you know, when he prayed for people, it was generally not even a prayer. If somebody was there to get healed, just be healed. It wasn't even a prayer. Okay, hardly ever made a really long prayer, you know, just a couple of sentences, that's it. But when he stayed by himself and prayed, he spent hours. I mean, by itself, should make us wonder what this was that way. Yeah. Okay? And if uh, we read the word, then we are going to see. There are many things that we can learn from his pattern, from what he did. Okay? See, Jesus was operating like a man. He had given up. Philippians chapter 2, giving up all the prerogatives of God, although he was still God. But he gave up all the prerogatives of God and he was operating like we do. Okay? So he didn't have any special treatment because he was Jesus. There was no, no, anything different than we do. But he needed for himself to receive personal direction, strength, Power from the Father. And this is the way he was getting those things. See, this is the way that we get from God the things that we need to walk day by day in our life without being going the wrong direction, making the wrong decision, feeling defeated, feeling, you know, knowing how to handle the situation, having the wisdom to know what to do concerning things. It makes all the difference. You know, you want to see, uh, you know, people ministry, people that um, are ministers, when uh, they communicate, they preach. You see immediately from the way they preach their prayer life. You don't need to be with them. Because, uh, you know, there are some that are charismatic and they can do big things, and, but it's still flesh. Okay? It's not the show. It's what happens spiritually that show you the truth. Okay? It's what happens, the difference it makes that the word that they speak makes on your heart. Okay, is the see one of the things that was evident with Jesus, you know, that the people were listening to the, to him, you know, and uh, not everybody accepted what he was saying. The Pharisees rejected what he was saying, but what people were saying said he speaks with authority. See, this is one of the things. See, the strength that he was receiving daily by prayer was manifested in the way he was communicating. Okay, in the way he was able to make choices, in the way he was able to understand what to do. Okay, so all these things he was receiving it. His public prayer was very short, but uh, his personal prayer was for hours. That what makes a difference. Okay, there are many other things, but really, you know, our personal prayer involves an intimate relationship with God. 
Okay. This is the, West, the things that we have to understand, and this is all about that. The intimate relationship that God expects to have with us because he created us to have a relationship with him. And uh, it's not a, per- a superficial relationship. It's not just a show that we put up. It's just that there is an intimate relationship. And we are going to discuss that, get more into that. We say we have to see how to develop this intimate relationship with God so that our prayers are going to be effective are not just talking in the air. See, talking in the air with believing nothing and doing nothing produces nothing. All right. It's not a show. It's a, see, God wants close relationship with us. This is the way he created Adam and Eve. And he had that relationship. But we had to maintain that. See, the problem with them was that he didn't, they didn't maintain that. They just got deflected because evidently they got involved in uh, discussing things with the wrong person. Amen? Amen. All right. So, um, see, the natural man doesn't understand intimate relationship to start with because uh, it's based on the senses. So most of the people, when you talk about relationship, uh, intimate relationship, think about sex. But that has absolutely nothing to do with intimate relationship because you can have sex and have completely no intimate relationship with somebody. Hello? So the idea is not, you know, that it's a false idea that everybody can understand. See, we're going to sh- you're going to show something that the Bible call talks about another mystery, and we're going to see actually from the scripture this is called okay, a mystery. You know, the fact that when uh, there is an intimate relationship, two people become one. Um, see, this is true in marriage and it's true with God. So, taking a step back now, you know, Jesus needed strength for himself, direction, anointing, supernatural power, all these things that he needed to do his ministry. Do you think that uh, you don't need it? You know, I mean, the idea is that we need those things too. He's our example. And as we learn from him, then we can uh, have the same type of results that he got. We need those things. You know, do you think that it's enough to get one or two meetings, maybe a week, to have the power and the strength that you need within yourself? See, it's a foolish thing to think when you are continuously bombarded by things from the enemy in the world that are affecting the way you feel, the way you think, the way everything. So it's, you know, our relationship with the source of our power, with the source of our strength, with the source of, we are called to operate on a supernatural level. This is what Christianity is about. That's the difference between Christianity and all the other religion. They don't have that. This is what we are called to do. This is Jesus. See, God's plan is for us to become like him. You say, oh, well, there's a long way there. (laughs) Well, the thing is, don't look at the way it's there. You see, we cannot do it ourselves. See, that's the thing. We cannot do those things ourselves because we are just earth. Okay? So it's not out of our own ability. We cannot put ourselves, pull ourselves up without, from our bootstraps, the way I say. Yeah. You know, you can't pull yourself up within, you know, it has to come from God. Amen. 
How do you think you're going to get from God is by communicating with him. You know, one of the things we said, that prayer is communication, is interaction, is communion with him. And it's not just one way, it's two way. If it's one way, there is, a mis there is a, something wrong with it. There has to be a two way communication. There is a two way input, transference. Okay, so when we start experiencing that, our attitude, our desire to pray, it changes completely. It's not just a show that we do at church because uh, we have to show off. You know, what Jesus said, you know, when you do that, forget it because uh, um, you get nothing. You already got what you deserved. Okay. The idea is instead the other one that we had to really establish this uh, transfer of uh, things between us and him. And as uh, we are in the receiving end, because we have not much to give, but to give ourselves. As we give ourselves, then he can fill us up. He can give us strength. He can give us the wisdom that we need. He can give us the ability to operate at the level that, uh, you know, people look at you and say, how can you do it? Uh, are you following me? Does it sound exciting? Well, I'll tell you this. You know, when you start actually experiencing that, it changes everything. Now, you know, there, was a, there were different times in which Jesus prayed. But possibly if you want to see, you know, one of the things I said last week was the fact that, uh, you know, everybody, even people don't believe, even atheists, you know, when are in a crisis situation, they, they start, you know, praying. Even if they don't believe there is any God. Okay, that's because we are made that way, because this is natural, you know, it's from our spirit. It's not from our thinking or our head that project produce that kind of decisions or results that are wrong. We deeply know, even if we don't want to accept it. Okay? So, but the, Jesus was in a situation of that type when he knew what was coming and was in, you know, when he went to pray in Gethsemane. Okay? That was the time which we can see some things as well. And we are going to start from there to really start expanding on that and start seeing some of the things that are involved. So Mark, Mark I'm going to go from Mark, chapter 14, verse 32. It says, and they came to the place which was called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciple, sit here and pray. And I pray, and while I pray. For verse following verse. And he took Peter, James, and John with him, and, be, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. So he went away from all the others, you know, was already reducing the number of people that were interfering with what he was doing. Okay, following verse. And he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. And he went a little further. Another translation says this is a strontro, you know, so just maybe 30 feet or something like that. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he came and found so that... that he yeah, doesn't say the whole the time, but evidently he was there for some time. And from another translation, he said it was at least one hour that he was there praying. Okay. And then he came and found them sleeping. I mean, it was there before we were awakening, we were with them, now they were asleep. It was night, it was uh, late. And said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch? For one hour, oh, actually, is this the translation? That, okay, so the idea is that he was there, you know, an hour just flaked off. All right? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
Okay. Let's take some things apart from this, you know, so that we understand some of the things. The number one thing, evidently, he wanted to be alone. Okay. He didn't want any interference. You know, even the disabled that were there, no, that they just leave me alone. I had to deal with the father. Okay. And the way he addressed the father is Abba, father. You know, Abba means daddy in modern English. So there was a relationship between him and God. There was a close relationship, an intimate relationship like a little child has with his daddy. Okay. This is an important element to see the type of relationship that we should have with God. He is not somebody far away. He is not somebody that uh, we just are afraid to talk to. Is somebody that uh, you can go like a child to the daddy and says, Daddy, you know, I have a problem here. And so this is the way he related to that. See, the basis of relationship that we have with God should be a close relationship, a trustful relationship, a relationship that we go to him with confidence, without fear. So that we can talk to him, so that we can communicate, that we can express our problems. And we are not there thinking that, uh, you know, if I mess it up, he's going to squash me. But that's what we get from religion. He's there to lift us up. He's there to pull us in his arm and give us a hug and strengthen us, encourage us, if we have the right relationship with him. See, this is why we get the strength, the confidence to deal with the situations that we are dealing with because he's there to lift, lift us up. Amen. Hallelujah. So, you know, and this is not the only place it goes that way, you know, but we can see that uh, when we address him, you know, instead of being formal, instead of being thou and this, you know, like in a language that we don't even use to talk with each other, you know, it's something that we should talk with, like we talk with the closest friend. Amen. You see, the purpose of God creating couples, men and women, was to teach us how to have a close relationship, because otherwise, if he would have been just you know, generating things by ourselves, there would now have been a chance or the opportunity to, to create such a close relationship with somebody else. And we can see this is completely scriptural because we're going to see scriptures later on. See, but the idea is that God wants a, a, such a close relationship with us that escapes us, even the understanding, because, uh, you know, the unity that we can achieve with a close relationship with God is that uh, his characteristics, as I said other times, his DNA, the divine nature attributes are transferred unto us. And we can start experiencing the same thing that Jesus experienced because we had done the same thing and what he got, we can get. Amen? Amen? All right. All right. So the second thing I want to stress here is the fact of watch. You know, and we repeat it twice in this, just for these few verses. You know, the watching is important. Watching is not just a question of looking. You know, this is, you know, the word used there is like a sentinel on the, on the, on the towers, you know, looking for what's going on, identifying enemies coming, identify the situation. See, we had to be watching what's going on around us. We are watching not just physically. See, our watch is uh, deeper than what we can see with our eyes. We have to learn to watch and discern spiritually so that we know what is coming. Because when it's coming, it's not going to surprise us. This is why, so that you do not enter into temptation. You see, you don't wait for the temptation to come. You know what's going to happen. You didn't even go there. Amen. 
Okay, this is a much easier way to go than pull yourself out when you got in trouble. We had to watch. We had to be watchful. We had to be aware of what's going on, aware of what's going on around us, or inside us, and all these things make a complete difference in our walk. If you want to walk in victory, you know, if you are in a war, and we are in a war, spiritual war, we didn't talk about that before, you know, if we are in a war, and you are a soldier, and you go around in the fields like, you know, what's going to happen? You're going to get hit. You don't want to be a casualty, do you? Okay? And spiritual casualty sometimes is worse than a physical one. Because that can last forever. Okay. So, you know, talking about the sentinel, looking from the city wall, making sure that nothing is up happening in the territory, in the areas that you are responsible for. And pray. Okay, this is a really a, a go to God in request. You know, the word there in Greek implies, you know, you go with the request in humbly before God to, to talk with him and, uh, you know, knowing that he's going to answer. And see, so this is what is going to put you in a position even to avoid temptations. Because uh, you deal with them before they even come. Okay? So, <clears throat> says the spirit is willing. Well, you know, the spirit is willing. Is it that true? I mean, it depends. It was true maybe for them because they've been with Jesus for three years. So they have been hearing the word. But somebody in the world, ah, sometimes they look for the trouble. Yeah. They want to do the wrong thing. So the spirit even is not willing. See, but if you are a born again believer, your desire is to do what God wants you to do. Right. And so if you are a born again believer and you stay with the word and you are not influenced by the world, then uh, you are going to be wanting, your spirit is going to be willing too. Are you following me? Yes. All right. But the flesh is weak. Well, the flesh, you know, just, uh, and, you know, the flesh, your heart is depending on how much your word has effect on you before. So, you know, there are areas in which uh, we have maybe weaknesses or maybe susceptible to temptation. You know, and so maybe you get strong, there's not even a temptation anymore. You're exposed to say, Oof, push it off. All right. All right, so, see, this is um, already a good place to start. Okay, now, the, the thing is, you know, our flesh, our emotions have a strong impact on us. And because of that, you know, it's easy to be swayed by the environment you're in. So the environment that we are in or involved in or you know, uh, staying generally makes a big difference in the way you're going to walk. Even if you want right, the right thing, but you don't understand that to do in, go in certain places, to, to see certain things, to talk with some people, you know, is going to have a negative effect on you, then uh, don't be surprised if you end up falling because it's the natural thing to do. You've been exposed to it and you have been, you know, just... Uh, Slowly, the enemy takes over. It's the natural thing for that to for the, that to happen. So we had to understand that, you know, and we had to when. But our our heart is transformed, and our mind is transformed by the by the word of God. Then, uh, you know, that thing even the, our flesh becomes stronger and knows what to do before, so that we don't even get in there. Okay, now intimacy, and I want to stress that for today. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe <laughs> we can start that anyway. Um, let's read a couple of more scriptures. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, it says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. A hypocrite is somebody that shows something and it really means something else. They want to do something else, okay? For they love to pray standing in the synagogues 
or the churches, whatever. And uh, to the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Their reward. You see, it's not a question of show off to anybody. You see, it's you and God. Amen. Finished. The more you get other people in, even because they are present, they interfere with you in talking to God. It's the same thing, you know, if you are not too many people, you just get confused. You talk one, you cannot have an intimate relationship where there are too many people around. Okay? You need privacy. All right. So, um, verse 6, following. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in secret, in the secret place. I read that again. Praying to your father who is in the secret place, and your father who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say, reward me openly? Reward me openly. You see, the idea is that uh, it's not going to be just something that you know yourself. It's going to be evident. It's going to be everybody can see it. You see, that's the difference when you are charged up, when you are filled with the Spirit, when God is working inside you and give you the power to do things that otherwise yourself you couldn't do. The man cannot do. Are you following me? Yes. Okay. So, a few things here. They want to pull out of the scriptures. Number one, your room. Talks about your room. Actually, uh, in the King James, this is a new King James. You know, the King James says, you know, your closet. <laughs> really doesn't matter. You know, the word in Greek is uh, tamion. The word tamion means a closet. A secret room, a chamber used to for storage, storage and privacy. So you see, it's a place away from interference from everybody else. See, this is Jesus' instruction. Go someplace where nobody can mess up with you. Okay? You want to be in an intimate relation with God. You see, when God... When Adam was in the garden and he interacted with God, he had that, that close relationship. The garden, there was no any interference around. And he was surrounded by the glory of God and God would be there and said fellowship with him. That God's desire, God's plan is exactly the same today as it was then. He wants to have that kind of intimate relationship with us. You see, the thing is, you know, he, he likes that. That's why he created us. But, you know, because he were created, when you create something for a purpose, okay, when the thing does the purpose, it's fulfilled. When you are created for the purpose that God wants to fellowship with you, you know, when you fellowship with God, you're going to be fulfilled. Amen. Everything that you were made for is going to be manifested in there. So you see, when we are going to deal with these issues, unfortunately, I'm not going to have the time today. I thought so. You know, I mean, when you want to get into these things, it takes uh, time to get them across. Otherwise, it's superficial. You don't get anywhere. Okay. So I want to, you know, get to the place when you really can... Uh, Receive revelation because revelation produces transformation. Amen. I want you to come out transformed yes. so that you are not going to be naturally doing the things that you were naturally doing before. Okay. This is what God's plan is. So, you know, so he was having a fellowship with God naturally. There was no interference. Okay. And they left the interference in. All right? Well, we are in this world. Everywhere is bombardment with um, just turn on the TV, just, you know, if you don't get depressed or you don't get uh, oppressed or whatever it is, you know, 
read the newspaper, look around. You know, the world is a mess. It's going to get worse. So we better get stronger. See, how do you get stronger? Well, you connect with the swords. The swords is there to give you everything that you need. Praise the Lord. He is willing. Are we? <laughs> That's the key. All right. So, our prayer closet or our private place, you know, away from all the distractions is the way to have fellowship with God and intimacy with the, our Heavenly Father. See, the Heavenly Father is, uh, you see, the image we had to get, okay? The, Jesus' way, Abba Father, and the intimate relationship with the Father. You know, if we didn't have a good relationship with our Father, I mean, they were limited. They were people. They messed up things sometimes. Some fathers may be worse than many other fathers. But our Heavenly Father is the best you can get. And so if we have a bad relation, a bad experience with our parents, we may find difficult to be able to get to that place. And one of the things we had to do is to start going to the word so that our mind changes about the way we see the father, because otherwise we cannot get into the relationship that he wants to have with us. And it's our resistance to be able to break through that he wants to break through. Amen. He wants to minister to us. He wants to lift us up. He wants to give us strength. He wants to give us victory. He wants to give us freedom. Amen. And you know, but it happens only when we want it. And we not just want it a bit, we wanted to want it badly because uh, we had to overcome the resistance that is within us that the flesh doesn't like. Amen. See, we are our worst enemies in certain areas. Okay. All right. So... All right. Well, next week, <laughs> we are going to get into the closet. Okay? We are going to, all of us. Well, we are going to see what uh, the closet does to us. You see, um, you're going to see that, you know, the closet is not just a physical place. The closet is a spiritual place. Amen. Because you can lock yourself in a room and just get claustrophobic and doesn't do anything to you. Okay? It's not the room. Actually, Jesus didn't go in a room. He went to the desert. So it was the opposite. You know, but was still by himself. Are you following me? Yeah. So it's not the physical place that makes a difference. It's the spiritual place. That means it's the position that you have in your heart that's going to make the whole difference about this, the way you're going to deal with it, and the way you're going to see results. Okay? And praise the Lord. I mean, the Bible gives us all the information that we need so that we can go in there and change the world and change ourselves. See, because the first things that happen it's not you don't change your environment. To start with, you start changing yourself. Amen. That's what makes you excited. Because when you start changing yourself, what happens, you're going to start changing the things around you. Amen. But if you try to change the things around you without changing yourself first, you're going to fail. God wants to empower you to set you free from your bondages, enabling you to overcome anything, mental, physical, emotional, whatever. There is no sin, there is no sickness, there is nothing, no, not emotional problem, they cannot be overcome by God, because to God, all things are possible. And they are also possible to those who believe. Amen? 
All right, well. Time is always too short. I think we should do longer services. <laughs> I mean, as long as you don't fall asleep, then it's okay. Huh? Praise the Lord. I think we should make a confession here. Yeah? Amen? All right. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that we can come to you as your loving daddy. Because you are always there to lift us up and hold us close so that we can receive from you all the good things that you made available to us by sending Jesus to die for us, to give his life so that we can have his life working in us, empowering us to overcome every situation in our life and the life of those close to us that we love. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. The Lord is good.